Hey, I'm Menno. I sometimes feel like my life started at my university induction week. I made friends for life, I founded my company, and I met my wife. My biggest passion is to bring people from education level A to education level B. But there seems to be an incredible problem with that, especially in the Netherlands, but also in the European countries surrounding us. What we see if mess is massive dropout numbers. I even have clients uh, which lose about 70% of their first year students. The reason for these dropouts is various. First of all, we have the national systems, for example, the financial aid for students. Second of all, we have the institute factors. Uh, perhaps they don't offer flexible studying or they lack study support. And last but not least, we have the individual factors, right? For example, uh, motivation of the student or perhaps the socio-economical background. And I've been thinking, what can we do to increase retention? And it seems that there lies a solution within how companies look at their employee life cycle. When we look at the employee life cycle of companies, we see stages from uh, onboarding going to offboarding. And what companies in HR do is they try to use all kinds of activities and, the, and see all kinds of opportunities in all those stages in order to make an employee more successful. And we see that the student life cycle is almost similar to this employee life cycle. So what can we learn from that? Research tells us that during the employee life cycle, onboarding is one of the most important stages to make employees more successful. So let, let us in, look into that and see whether or not universities and university program leaders can learn from that. A few years ago, onboarding was not a hot topic yet, and what we see is that there was a lot of issues around it. So uh, let's say the love for the new employer uh, was as over as it was for the former employer after three months. We saw that 40% of all the employees were not informed enough, well informed enough, at the beginning of their journey within a company. And what companies do, and what HR does, is look into that employee life cycle and make that onboarding stage better. And what we see, for example, now is that 54% of all the employees become more productive if they had a right onboarding. And we also see higher retention going up for 82%. So what can we learn from that as universities? When we look at onboarding, um, we, uh, we distinguish two types of onboarding. The main goal of onboarding is obviously to make the student feel at home, right? And there are two types of onboarding. First of all, we have the social onboarding. That's all about making friends, networking, getting familiar with the stakeholders. And next to that, we have what we call academic onboarding. And academic onboarding is all about getting to know the program, getting to know the university, but also getting to know the work field. And we conducted a research among clients in the UK and in the Netherlands, and what we see is that 73% of the universities and university programs are not satisfied or not confident with the current onboarding program that they have. That's a lot, right? And what we see is that it lacks structure, or there is no fun in it, or it's not COVID or online proof. So what can we do about it? Another thing about onboarding in universities is that it's often uh, a numbers game. So it's often the, let's say, more centralized marketing department who's responsible for the onboarding. But the centralized marketing department is not responsible for dropouts and it's not re responsible for study success. And they also don't have, uh, let's say, the tools to influence that. So when we look at onboarding, I think that you as a university course leader or as a module leader or as professors or teachers or program leaders, you have to take responsibility for the onboarding. So let us look at onboarding. We have several stages in onboarding. First of all, we have stage zero, which is the discover stage, and that's the stage from, let's say, the open days until the enrollment. And what we see there is that students get to know the university, right? 
And then comes an interesting stage. It's the stage from enrollment, so sign up until the first day of the program, the summer holidays. And what we see within those summer holidays is that there's almost no communication between the student and the, and the, um, uh, and the program and the university. Probably you recognize this, right? So what you need to do is stay in touch with them also during that uh, summer holidays. The next stage is obviously the best. It is the onboarding week, it is the induction week, the introduction. And what I suggest that you do is that you as a university program leader extend that phase, extend that induction week to 100 days. Because bonding and social bonding is not being done in a week. It's been done in the first 100 days after start. So you have to extend it. While building a proper onboarding program, you can also look into all the other, let's say, uh, hot topics in education that are out there. For example, sustainability. So sustainability is a topic in almost every strategic ag agenda of a university. So why not build in a sustainability challenge or assignment in the induction week, for example? But another thing is also badges. So we see a lot of universities working with badges now. Why don't we let students earn badges before they enter your gate? So this is all about onboarding and telling you why onboarding is so important. But I have to say that there is two crucial elements still missing out to make a proper and a successful onboarding program for students. Meet my son Mick. My, my, my son Mick is 10 years old now, but this picture was taken when he was nine. And as you can see, he's playing a very realistic flight simulator game. So this guy will knock on your door of the university in eight years and he will, be, he will be asking you, please onboard me. And then the question is, how are you going to involve him? How are you going to engage this guy? He will tell you that he flew a plane 10 years ago and now he wants to come and study with you. Is your pre and onboarding program good for him? I don't think so. He tells me everything is boring except for girls and computers. So probably your onboarding program is boring too, right? You need to build in gamification, the first secret sauce. And I was um, um, asked to build in gamification for the University of Applied Science in Arnhem and Nijmegen, eastern part of the country, of the Netherlands. Uh, and they wanted to have an onboarding for 3,000 students, including gamification. And that was great. So what we did is, first of all, we defined all the pre- and onboarding activities into smaller challenges. And what we did is we provided all the students with an app and they could score points, college coins, with all those pre- and onboarding activities. And Enga engagement went up sky high. So for example, um, uh, we had, they, they have a kind of uh, student satisfaction survey and usually only 15% of the student fills that, that out. And now we had 95 or 99% of the students filling that out. That was great. But what we also learned is that during pre-boarding, you have to build in more individual exercises. And during the onboarding phase, you build in the, let's say, more group-based exercises. And that is also when you bring in competition. Not at the pre-boarding yet, but at the onboarding, you have to bring in competition. Students like it. They love it. Another thing that they did, and that was great also, was that in the first in induction week, uh, all the universities were closed last year, right? So what they did is they, they, uh, they came up with a zip code challenge. So students had to look each other up, uh, up in their neighborhoods and then work together on smaller exercises and make friends in their neighborhoods. It was great, it was great. So gamification, number one. The other thing which is also important in a successful onboarding program is your role. Your role as a teacher, your role as a program leader to take charge of onboarding. And how you do that is by building in academic skills and employability modules. In the Netherlands, we're quite far with that. So all the universities of applied science have a compulsory, uh, let's say, uh, employability skills and, um, and uh, uh, sorry, academic skills and employability uh, modules within their courses. But what you often see is that a lot of universities say, okay, but that's the responsibility of a career center, right? 
No, it's your responsibility because you want to make the student feel at home. And how are you going to do that as a teacher, as a professor, as a lecturer? Well, first of all, there are four elements. We have the am I able element. That's all about capability. So what you're going to do is you're going to help the student develop study skills. Next to that, we have the being familiar element. That's all about becoming social. And that means that you're going to build in those 100 days, like I told you before. The bonding occurs in that 100 days. When we look at desire, it's all about the interests of the students. So you're going to tell them and you're going to explain them what the course is about, but also what the work field is about and what the roles are you're educating these people for, right? These students. And last but not least, we have the to-do or the act element. And that is where you provide continuous motivation. That is where you uh, show them different routes to the goals they want to achieve. That is where you pay attention to students that have more difficulties. So it's all about your role. So the benefits of this all seem very, obvi seem, uh, very obvious, right? So first of all, for the students, there is structure, there is fun, they get feedback. But also for the teachers and the program leaders and the universities, there's a lot of benefits. For example, they get data on the bonding of students. But they also, they're proud, they're proud of their institution. And what we see is that they have a communication channel, for example, with the app, like I told you, in RNN. So there's a lot of benefits, but I think the main benefit of it all is that if someone is onboarded in a right way, he or she becomes an ambassador for your organization. He or she will shout out, just like I did, with my, uh, let's say, onboarding in Amsterdam, I'm so proud of that. I'll, I'll shout it out, I'll tell it to everyone. So to conclude, if you as a university will reduce dropouts and build study success, you have to build in a proper onboarding program. And a proper onboarding program means that you build in gamification and employability and academic skills modules you will have to take the, um, uh, the employee, or in this, uh, in this way, the student life cycle very serious. And to all the students listening today, I advise you that on every step you take, or on every journey you embark, you demand a proper onboarding. Because let's be honest, if the start is good, 50% of the job is already done. Thank you so much.